Who is Liverpool's player of the season? Right, discussion time. <laughs> Liverpool Aussie have, on the, the official Liverpool website, have started their voters for player of the season. Um, we're going to get into our, you know, some, some standouts and stuff like that in a minute, but I don't know about you. I think, I, I think first is obvious, but I think you can do a top three, whatever. You, you, there's arguments to be made for six or seven lads that you could quite easily just say, you know what, Sadio Mane's number one, would we both, yeah. would we all agree, Chris, would you, would you go with that? Maybe. Yeah, well, I think Sadio Mane is my number one. But then there's, there's, it's nice that there's arguments that you two till six, seven, you could make genuine arguments for it. If, let's nail Mane, Mane on as our number one. Let's try and come up with a, a second and third choice. Who would you think, in your head, who would you be looking at? Um, personally, I think it's Adam Milan yep. the, the second best player for Liverpool this okay. season. I've got a few of the stats anyway. Uh, Sadio Mane, 26 start, one sub appearance. 13 goals in 26 starts, yeah. five assists. Only two man of the match performances, though. Mm. Lalana, 25 starts, two substitute appearances, seven goals, seven assists, one man of the match. Now, they're, they're for me, he was absolutely superb. And I personally have gone for Gene Wijnaldum as the third player. Yeah, that's exactly what I've done. You go for Wijnaldum, yeah. would you as well? Definitely. Uh, on, on who's, Wijnald- who's your second and third? I went Wijnaldum, then Lalana, but it's a similar. I also, this might sound mad, I considered Mignolet. Yeah. Did you only consider the last few months? I thought no, I thought he was good. I thought he'd been great all season, except Hull and maybe Chelsea. Actually, yeah. You know I think what? he's played. Yeah, I, yeah, I know you've, if you, you if, I think he's been really good, I really do. Out of our Matip at times definitely deserves a shout. I think Henderson is another one who's clearly in the yeah. Firmino's in the picture in the frame. I, I think Coutinho had such a such a bad January that you can knock him down. I think Emery Chan had such a bad time that you can probably Exclude him. I don't think you'd find many people who'd argue with all three of our top threes in what order it may be. But then after then, that it is hard to pick because you always have players in solid six sevens out of ten each week. You haven't had anyone other than Coutinho really who's had a really bad run of form, which is pretty good to say. I think the Coutinho one's quite interesting because he's actually got the most man of the matches out of anyone in the squad, and that doesn't surprise me because when he's on, yeah, he's a he's a man. He, the other day, I don't think he was that good against Everton. But he has moments in games where he just he can just open games up and he just does magic moments. Where, for example, Sadio Mane getting two man of the matches is mad to me because I'd give him like ten. You know what I mean? Every time he plays, he should be mad. He's been great. So, what what I would say is that I think sometimes, and I had this conversation on Twitter the other day, we sometimes undervalue our own players a bit as yeah. well. So, for example, I say I would say Simon Mignolet deserves a shout, and most people would just laugh. He's, he's fucking. He's been crap. But if you think if you go not game, crap. if you he, he, he might be crap, for example. So, but if you go game by game by game by game, there's an argument to me. He's played play pretty well. He's been sevens in quite mm. a lot of those games. What I would say is that now, if you go back to Wine Alden, are we? Do you think now, looking how good he's been in recent weeks, makes us think? Look back to the beginning of the season when those questions, what does this lad, this lad offer? If you watch those games now with the glasses on, you know now. Do you think you'd look back and go, actually, he was, he was offering the same as well he's been offering the last couple of months? Not much has changed, has it? He just wasn't sticking chances away, was he? That's probably the only difference. Yeah. He didn't have his shooting boots on when he first came. Or his head. Yeah, or his head. Interestingly, I had a look at the passing stats for Wijnaldum. He is the, from the midfielders and the forwards, has the highest pass completion, which I think, you know, if I had to, if you asked me who had it, I'd have said Henderson because he's slightly more, you know, a little bit further back on the pitch, plays a few easier passes. I think when you look at like centre backs, you'd you'd expect them to have high pass completion as well. Wan Aldum's is better than the centre backs. There's only one player in the squad who's got higher pass completion over ten games. Who is it? Ooh, Klein. No. Shout. Lalana, no. Milner, maybe. Milner. No, I've got in. Ragnar Clavin. Oh, what? Highest, highest pass completion. 13 games, and it was something like 89% pass completion. The thing completion. is, the thing with Raggy is he doesn't give the ball away. As, <laughs> as evidenced by the stat. <laughs> and his nick. I mean, the fact that his nickname is Raggy. Yeah, let's knock that on the head. Yeah, it's not great, is it? That's what Klopp calls him. I don't like Millie either, by Millie, the way. Millie? No. While we're, while we're there. Yeah. Millie's not great. Um, do, you think we're, do you think we're being harsh on the captain? In that, no, I'd, I'd that. definitely have him up there as well. Yeah. I think, you know, all right, 24 games, one goal, four assists in those games, but he's been vital to the way that we play football. And, you know, I mean, 
much like Gini Wijnaldum, for me it was probably a toss up between them two for the third place one, if I'm honest, because I gave it to Wijnaldum because he's changed his game, he's doing yeah. something that I never thought he could do and he's been incredible at it. Equally, let's not forget, we had question marks over where the Jordan Henderson could do that six role at the start of the season. And he has learned big time how to play that role. You know, look, you look at his stats around Europe's top five leagues. By the way, that should be top three leagues because um, two of them are absolute garbage. Um, but his passing stats are through the roof. You know, he's he's so good at keeping the ball. He's amazing at doing what we do. We 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 miss him so much when he's not there. And I think that's testament to how well he's been playing. I was just going to say it's the fact that we've adapted to playing without him has cost him his place in the in the top three players. I mean, other midfielders. The first injury this season, we missed them massively. It was one of those times where you say you don't really see what he does until he's not there. But now the way we've played the last couple of weeks without him is like I don't miss that he's not there anymore. Chan's come to the fore. He stepped up. He's saying he's for the first time in a while. He's a hundred percent fit. He's enjoying it again, and you can see it on the pitch that he's enjoying it again. He looks a hell of a lot better than Vinaldum went up another level because it's like it's like they all accepted the responsibility of like the captain's not here now. So. Was the threat in the field is we've got to step up, and that's cost him his place in the top three for me. I'd have him fourth, maybe fifth. Is Matip anywhere there for you? I, I think he's got to be, yeah. I think, you know, when he came back from injury, I thought he had three or four really sort of. If he can, yeah. yeah if, he, if he's a good word for it. So, yeah, you know what, for, for what we paid on him, which was nothing, and what we've got out of him. <coughs> Brilliant, like absolutely brilliant. But I think Ozzy hit the nail on the head before. We've not had many bad performers all season long. There's no one, good yeah, I've never had a player it, like other than Coutinho, January slash moving on, where you say he's in a terrible form. We've had people who've had off days, but we've never had other than Coutinho, who's had a consistently bad run of games. Yeah, even for me, you know, is the, is the last one I wanted to talk to you on, Chris, is that he's never been terrible at games, he's, he, hasn't, he hasn't impacted enough games, which is probably, probably why. If you're Liverpool centre forward, which he pretty much is, or attacking winger, you're not going to win this award unless you do what Sadio Mane does, for example. But he's another one who, at his ha- absolute best, could 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 easily be a player of the season type candidate. We just need to get that out of him now. Yeah, look, he's got nine goals and five assists this season, hasn't he, Roberto Firmino? And again, he's been. He's one of the reasons that Sadio Mane and Phil Coutinho have scored as many goals Absolute, as they've scored. Absolutely, yeah. Um, like I want Liverpool striker to be scoring 25, 30 goals a season, but ultimately right now we've got the best fit for our system and that's Roberto Firmino. Coutinho came up this week and was talking about how clever a player is and how he opens up space for him and Sadio Mane. His and movement's phenomenal. It's, self, it's quite selfless what he does yeah. for the team and he still managed to score. He'll probably score double figures this season. He may even assist double figures uh, from a position whereby he's actually servicing others. And I think that's really good. Do you think his social media game lets him down? I think social media games on point. It's lit. You think? Like, I th- no, it's not. There's, there's it's plenty. Really not, like. uh, did you see his Instagram post that got deleted that he put up? The kissing one. No. Which one? He accidentally posted a picture of his missus's. Oh. Hmm. No. Yeah, he did. Got it. Soon was deleted. You got it. No. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. No. Let's talk about this afterwards. Yeah. I, it, it, uh, you, Aussie. Would yeah. you like to see no? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose so. Are we are we all agreeing we're gonna with, with Mane, Lallana, Van Is that is that our, our trio? Yeah, that's mine. That's my top three. And Mane, Van Alden, Lallana. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, it's it's close, but it's what I would say. In just, my, for in my, miss, just for that miss at City, I could I can kind of agree that he goes third actually. But my yeah, the, yeah, the, 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 the Lallana miss. But what the, on that then, Chris? Two out of three signings that we made in the summer are two of Liverpool's. Best performers gives you give does that give you hope going into this summer because we've had so many summers where we just mm. come away we come away so you know ugh, I don't know the word is not disappointed but kind of uninspired I suppose is the best way uninspired and even after even after the last summer there was plenty of talk that Liverpool bit, it was another uninspiring summer we've got a lad who was a winger who was now in midfield and that second or third best player and we brought in a lad from Southampton who's been our best player. Again, does it give you give you real I'll confidence you gives, going to summer? I'll tell you what gives me confidence, right? Yes, it's all yeah. of that. Simon Mignolet has improved while Jürgen Kopp's been here. Nathaniel Klein maybe hasn't, to be honest. Uh, Joel Matip signing. Um, Lovren, improved. We've got an improved left-back without signing anybody. 
We've got a Jordan Henderson who's massively improved since Klopp arrived. Genie Wijnaldum has been a revelation. Yeah. Adam Alana's improved. Roberto Firmino's improved at a position that was, he was unfamiliar with. Phil Coutinho, the start of the season, massively improved. And Sadio Mane was a signing. How can that not give you hope? Nobody's regressed. No. Oz, yeah, would you go along with that then? And yeah, definitely. Chris made a little point earlier on about the, the signings and <coughs> like, I, how you said uninspiring. They could have looked. But they've gone on to be two or three of the best players in the team this season, and it just it's no matter who we sign in this summer, people just need to take a step back and not be too quick to judge. Let's see where we are. Just what ten games into next season. Let's not jump. Oh, we've signed another lad from Southampton. Fuck sake. Oh, we've signed a lad from Newcastle. Don't give a shit where they come from. Let's out see how they play once they put the red shirt on. And Chris, let's just buy into it because they've bought into it. If you, if you looked at it the summer as a whole, I mean, ignore Manning, he, he would come in so we could loan Danny Ward up, but it's only really carrier so you could look at it and go, you know what, not for us. Yeah. Clavin, as a, as a three million fourth choice sound, you're talking Matip, first choice nailed on, Wijnaldum, Sadio Manning, they're your four big, you know, big signings and they've all just come in and been yet. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and I think Liverpool have struggled for years to try to get a good goalkeeper in and you know I still hold out hope that Carrius could turn good at Liverpool yeah, and yeah. I think Klopp saw something in him just go back, you know, I go back to it I don't want to echo the point too much is that everybody else has improved and if he keeps with Carrius I think Carrius will improve as well it's, it's, again, and if you do that it could go down as a, a you know if Liverpool in one summer sorted out goalie defender midfielder forward it's fun, <laughs> it might go down as a really you know fucking great summer and, and fingers crossed that's how it goes. Um, let's end it there then before we... Uh... Yeah, don't forget to leave your comments actually in the uh, oh, in the YouTube comments below and of course on the, if you're watching on the website leave your comments down there as well. Uh, leave us your top three players um, in order. Three, two, one and uh, we'll, we'll have a little look in the Dusty comments bin. and see what Dusty, everyone else yeah. I got the wrong way around. I just told the whole suit uh, what to fuck off basically. You meant that the two is meant to be that way and I did it the other way. That's all right. Soz people, I didn't mean to swear here, yeah, I just got me dusty bin the wrong way around. <laughs> so Ozzy, I appreciate you coming in, thank you very much. Chris, I appreciate you being here, as always. I appreciate you hosting the show, Steve. I can't believe we, we didn't talk about this, by the way. How mad is it that Colo Torre could be invincible twice in his career, the first player to ever do it? Second. Really? Yeah, Frank Reichardt did it. Apparently. Did he? There you go, second, yeah, apparently. apparently. Well, that's why we're not talking about it then. Because it, it's been done. It's been done, Colo, one lucky. Congratulations, Brendan, on your title win. You know, shame it wasn't with us, but mm. you know, such things aren't meant to be. If only we were Celtic fans. If this was Celtic TV, we we, we wouldn't. The heartache would not have been there nearly as much. I'd probably still have here. Right. Anyway, <laughs> thanks to guys for subscribing. It's you know, we really appreciate you subscribing. Tune in. Hopefully, I say, if you're watching this post Bournemouth, the final words should be about now or coming in the next few days. The build up to Stoke. And as the ball keeps on rolling towards the end of the season and hopefully Champions League football, stick with us, we've got you covered. Until next time, I will see you all later. ta -ra.